My older brother, Orion, the oldest of my parents' children, died in December of 1897, fifty years after the death of our father and seven years after that of our mother. Born a decade before me, Orion was seventy-two years old. I have outlived him. I have outlived all of my siblings, although at seventy-four I am not yet as old as Familia was when she died. She was just so short of seventy-seven. I have no burning ambition of overtaking her in that way, though. Orion was always mercurial, full of passion for some new idea wrought from the forge of his brain and furnace of his heart each day and discarded for a new one the next. And in between the laying down of one enterprise and the taking up of the next, periods of dense gloom would descend upon him. Orion's life was spent pursuing careers as varied as raising chickens and serving as Secretary of Nevada Territory, and as part of that latter office, often serving also as acting governor in the frequent absences of that august personage. Besides those forays into politics and poultry, Orion also tried his hand at printing, editing, inventing, running a boarding house, and even writing and lecturing. He could have been successful as a politician because he was loved by all and recognized as an honest man of principle. Perhaps for that very reason he was really unsuited rather than suited to be a politician. It is possible that due to being subconsciously aware of this lack of his, he deliberately sabotaged himself from continuing in that line of endeavor by suddenly taking up the cudgels for temperance in Nevada at the time of that region's transition from territoryhood to statehood. Had Orion at least kept dark for a time on the subject, he probably could have become the first governor of the state of Nevada. But it was not to be, as temperance was decidedly unpopular in Washoe. So he returned to the Midwest in his more accustomed way of life, living hand to mouth and eventually becoming reliant on me to subsidize his flights of fancy. Let it be said nonetheless, though, that Orion's heart was made of the purest gold, purer than any ever mined and assayed in California. He was always truthful. He was always sincere. He was always honest and honorable. Born and reared among slaves and slaveholders, Orion was yet an abolitionist from his boyhood to his death. It was the abolitionist in Orion which impelled him to support Lincoln in the Rail Splitter's 1860 run for the presidency, which resulted in Orion being rewarded with an appointment as Secretary of the New Nevada Territory. That allowed me an opportunity to go along with him. Although I paid the stage tickets for both of us, as Orion had no money at the time, it was really he who made a way for us to go there. If I had not gone west then, what would have happened in my life? What would have become of me? I could easily say I owe everything from 1861 on to Orion or even to Abraham Lincoln, or Harriet Beecher Stowe, our former neighbor in Hartford. It all depends on how far back you want to take things and how deeply you are willing to examine them. 